Greetings, I'm John from Two Brothers. You might remember the video from last year where I reviewed the FMS pits and kind of took a big ol' steaming dump on it. Well, in the interest of fairness, FMS sent me a new one to review. So, here's what happened. It hovers, it tumbles, it does precision aerobatics, it does a lot of things really well. Things that I just couldn't do before because I wasn't at the skill level that I am now. Here's what it doesn't do right. Plastic servos. I don't know why FMS sells a heavy plane like this with plastic servos. I stand by what I said in the last vid on it. Uh, the, the thing came with plastic servos to begin with, which is just terrible for a model this, this size and weight. Can somebody explain to me why a model that weighs as much as this thing does flies with plastic servos? Because that just sounds dangerous to me. Replace them with FMS metal units. There's a link in the description. You can keep the aileron servos stock, but definitely replace the rudder and elevator, especially since the plane is prone to crappy landings like these. Yeah, my skill level has really improved, hasn't it? <laughs> Look, all jokes aside, everyone makes mistakes. The Pitts actually takes these garbage landings pretty well. I'm going to take back what I said about it last year. Honestly, if I had to tell you guys what my honest review on this thing was, if I was to review it, I would say don't buy it. It's got so many problems. It's not bad. Any airframe will probably fly like crap if you crash it one too many times. In our first Pitts ate it several times from the battery coming loose on it. Twice now we've had the battery fly to the back of the plane. First time happened to Tony when he was doing aerobatics with it. Second time happened to me when I was doing aerobatics with it. Yep. That battery system FMS put in this thing is not the best. This might be her last flight. Maybe the heading mode will help. Oh, safe don't do nothing either. Golly, we are in tail heavy hell. Keep the throttle up, because that's the only thing safe in this plane right now. Turn the stabilizer up to you, that ain't helping either. Holy. I am doing everything I can to save this plane, man. Not bad. She survived. So here's what happened. 100% guaranteed that battery's in the back of this thing. It's not, but it broke through my battery reinforcement system. So sideways, it was flopping all around in here. You'll want to take my buddy Adam's advice from Model Aviator and put a piece of wood into the canopy so it'll hold the battery tight. If you don't do this, the plastic tabs keeping the battery in place can fail and you'll get a tail heavy monster that'll probably crash on you. This keeps the battery from sliding out of the plane. The Pitts is a project airplane. It's not a project like the Freewing F-14 where I had to put close to $1,300 into it to make it worthwhile, but it'll cost you about $20 to upgrade to metal geared servos so that it can handle bad landings. Because unless you three point it, you're gonna have bad landings. It's one of the bounciest airplanes that I've ever flown and it takes a tremendous amount of effort to wheel land it. And if you somehow manage to not bounce it, the rudder is so sensitive that you risk a runway excursion. So what's the solution here? Three point it. Bring it in slowly with a slightly nose up attitude and it'll land effortlessly every single time. Takeoffs are kind of doo doo too if you try to wheel takeoff with the same sensitive rudder issue. Even with a ton of expo, it'll still slide around a lot, and I suspect the sliding has a lot to do with the plastic wheels the Pitts uses. They got no tread, man. They just can't grip the ground very well, so even a little bit of rudder makes the plane slip around easily. So if you're on pavement, do a three-point takeoff with some gentle elevator pressure. It'll skid all over the place if you don't. One thing I really enjoy about the Pitts is that its heavy weight really carries it through tumbles and other aerobatic maneuvers. Since the last time that I've flown it, I feel like I've improved enough as a pilot to really appreciate it for what it is, especially since a lot of the 3D planes I fly are featherweight in comparison, and it's pure fun to fly once you work through the few issues that it's got. And if you're like me and you enjoy hovering something like this, you're in for a surprise. The Pitts is actually one of the most stable hovering platforms that I've flown so far. 
Once you get it nose up, it'll basically sit there so long as you don't over control it. Once it starts torque rolling, it's a sight to behold, especially when it decides to really start spinning. The drawback to flying it like this is that you gotta use most of the throttle to keep it steady, but it recovers instantly and doesn't drop a wing either. It's super predictable. I'm actually shocked at how much I enjoy hovering it, which is why this segment is so long. I just kept doing it over and over and I never got bored with how awesome it is. The aerobatic potential of this plane is really good, but it's kind of offset by the fact that it's a pain in the ass to assemble at the field. This is one of my least favorite models to build due to how complex the assembly is, generally taking about 5 minutes, with a lot of screws that are easy to drop in the grass. And it can be kind of finicky to put the wing struts on too, but sometimes you gotta put in some effort to assemble something that flies this well. It doesn't fly like it's heavy at all, even though it is, and it doesn't bite hard when it stalls either. It's certainly a little on the underpowered side, and I feel that it could have about 30% more thrust and be a much more powerful airframe, but it's good enough to hover and still punch out of it. Slowly. It's been two years of owning the pits, and now that I'm flying a new airframe with none of the weird gremlins that had found their way into the previous one from all of the crashing it experienced, I've got to review it once more. And I'm calling this one a solid 8.5 out of 10. The bouncy wheels, lack of tread on those wheels, and close coupled design make it sensitive on the ground. Lots of rudder expo won't hurt, but find what works for you. The battery tray mod is a requirement and should already be fixed by the factory. FMS has dropped the ball here in my opinion, and this plane should not be flown until you fix this potential issue. Worth noting also are the plastic elevator and rudder servos, which are a $20 fix. Pick up both servos via the link in the description if you buy the pits. If you can get used to doing three-point takeoffs and landings on pavement, dealing with the annoying assembly and a couple of mods that need to be done, you'll have an absolutely fantastic aerobat that you'll cherish for as long as you can keep it airworthy. It's built like a tank, it takes impacts well, and it generally handles wind really well with how heavy it is, too. Just go into it knowing that it's not as simple as a plug-and-play setup if you want it to fly safely. Now if you want the pits, get 10% off of it using the code REFERRAL2BROSRC or $10 off using the code 2 RC on fmstobby.com to help reduce the cost and make it even more affordable. Let us know what you think on our Discord server and we'll see you again next time.